Hi all, this is CA Isidore Lupos. Welcome to our third lecture on GST. So we have completed our first chapter. Now the second chapter, so we have understood the concept. So the what is GST, why GST is introduced. So and the framework of GST like output liability, input tax credit, such details we have seen. Now we are going to see the actually the how GST mechanism is what is the supply supply under gst so under this chapter what we are going to see so supply under gst so in this chapter what we are actually going to learn understand and analyze the taxable event under gst supply its meaning and scope so when should a gst be collected so gst should be collected at the time of supply so what is supply and what is its importance in gst identify the transactions that will amount amount to supply even without consideration so while seeing what is supply we will see the parameters when supply is actually happening and we will see the transactions so what transactions do constitute supply then classify the transactions as either supply of goods or supply of service so some, some supply happens for example a, i transferred a goods to you so it is so this is transfer whether transfer is a supply yes we will see that and it is if it is supply then whether it is supply of goods or supply of services so we have to understand we have to classify that then pinpoint the transactions which are neither supply of goods nor supply of service whether any activity is a supply no you will see that so what are the transactions which are not supply of goods not supply of service nothing that means they are not they are not under the control of gst then explain the composite and mixer supplies and their taxability so supply can be single supply individual supplies can be there then bundled supplies so bundling means two or more services or two or more supplies together so whether that is composite or mixed supply and what why we have to distinguish a supply as composite and mixed supply these concepts we are learning in this chapter okay so let's go ahead now if you see the orientation of the study material we can see that the definitions that means in in the bear act we can see definitions so section 2 of the act is actually definitions then if you see while going to this chapter we will see a lot of specific terms so those terms are actually defined in the act so goods so actually goods it's actually colloquially we use the term goods but actually what is goods as per the act so this is actually gst act so we have to learn we have to interpret the act so for interpreting the act definitions has been given so when we see the term principle what is what's the meaning of principle it is actually defined in the act in section 2 so we have to read this so if you see this alignment of the chapter is definitions has been given a lot of definitions has been given then then concept of supply section 7 of cgst act see listen there is cgst act esgst act utgst act gst compensation to state act so we have seen the relevant act cgst act is applicable to the whole of india now yes gst acts has been given control over the relevant states specific states so each state has their own sgst act so kerala has kerala gst act kgst act so for a cs student in the intermediate level so we have to learn cgst act as well as igst act because cgst and igst will be applicable all over india specific state-wise act are not required in our study 
but while having a practical experience or practical consultancy we have to because if we are in the state of kerala then we have to read the relevant provisions of kgst act also so but what is actually in this state gst act those items or those sections in the cgst act itself is replicated with some minor modifications or the same in sgst act also so section 7 cgst act so concept of supply now if you see the alignment of the material statutory provisions so the bear act bear act means what is written in the act cgst act so that is typically depicted here so ditto so after so why this is given we can understand how act language is written so how act is written we will understand it here now after that they have given something known as analysis so in the analysis part each and every point each and every subsection has been elaborately described so the details of the relevant bear acts so for example if you see say 71 71 supply includes so they have given the definition of supply but just by reading say this four or five lines we will not get a vast idea of what a supply is so for that they have given this analysis so analysis will be going to pages and pages so we will be in detail we will say so two objectives are there one to read the bear act and understand the language of the act and to to interpret the act now we will see so in order to interpret we need definitions we have to understand what the definitions is so for exams definitions will not be asked as such it is just for our understanding so what are the specific terms since we are learning it for the first time we have to understand what how act defines each and every words so let's see some important terms say goods what is goods goods means every kind of movable property other than money and securities but includes actionable claim growing crops grass and things attached to or forming part of the land which are agreed to be served before supply or under a contract of supply so the most important thing is what do you mean by goods so gst is goods and service tax so what is goods what is service goods means every kind of movable property so whatever moving properties are there those are their goods so for example dress glass laptop fan so all are goods other than money and securities money so the currency that we have money money is not goods so i am giving you 100 rupees i need not charge gst on that okay say so suppose we are going to bank so we are applying for a loan so bank is giving us the money so 2 lakh rupees loan so they are giving money that is not a supply of goods but bank provides ancillary services so they are services so they can charge gst on the service part but the money they are giving us that is not a supply of goods that is not goods actually so if it is not a goods then supply of goods cannot be possible now securities what do you mean by securities securities means shares debentures etc so if i purchase a share if i purchase a share they won't charge gst on the share because it is not a goods okay but the say stock market like the stock or the stock broker they provide us a service and for that they charge brokerage so for that brokerage it is actually a service for that they can charge the gst but if we purchase a share for the value of the share there is no gst because it is not a goods then if i give you 100 rupees it is transaction in money so there is it is not a goods now principal there is somebody known as principal agent relationship so in this foundation classes itself we have learned about principal and agent so principal and agent so agent is carrying on the business on behalf of principal okay and who is principal principal is the one person on whose behalf agent carries an activity that is principal and agent now competent authority competent authority means authority notified by the government so competent authority means department of any authority under the government so they are actually competent authority most important one is 
family one of the most important definition is family so what do you mean by family family means spouse children okay spouse children now so spouse children do not include my our brother sister or parents and all only spouse and children now second point parents grandparents brothers and sisters of the person if they are wholly or mainly dependent on the said person only dependent parents grandparents brothers sisters will be my family okay so that's very interesting definition so for example i am my brother so my brother is actually he is a working person he is working abroad so since he is working abroad he is not dependent upon me since he is a he has job he is not dependent upon me so he is not my family but my spouse or my children even if they are dependent or they are working but still they are family so for a person his child his children is his family but for the children the father or the parents is not family they are family only if they are dependent okay now business so business we have heard the term colloquially what do you mean by business business includes any trade commerce manufacture profession vocation adventure wager or any other activity any trade commerce manufacturing profession vocation everything anything is business any activity or transaction in connection with or ancillary to the above so any activity or any transaction which are ancillary to trade commerce manufacture profession vocation is also business any activity whether or not there is volume frequency continuity or regularity of such transaction so there need not be say for example i, I need not do it for the full, full year even so irrespective of the volume or the frequency the number of times i did but still any trade commerce can be business so it need not be a continuous one i you know do it in for a five times or six times even one time activity can also constitute business supply or acquisition of goods including capital assets and services in connection with commencement or closure of business so acquisition of goods including capital assets purchase of capital assets can be also business then services in connection with commencement or closure of business any services or any activities in relation to business which can be related to commencement of the business or which can be related to closure of the business that is also business then provision by a club association society or any such body of the facilities or benefits to its members services provided by club to its members is still business admission for a consideration of the persons to any premises so entrance fees is charged say from water theme park admission to the water theme park is provided so that is actually business now services supplied by person as a holder of an office which has been accepted by him in the discourse or furtherance of his trade profession or vocation so he as a holder of the office say as a chairman he is providing a service it's actually business activities of a race club including by way of totalizer or license to bookmaker or activities of a license to bookmaker in such club so race clubs so the persons in charge of the race club the services they are providing that's also business then any activity or transaction undertaken by the central government state government or local authority in which they are engaged as public authorities so activities undertaken by government as public authorities that is actually business that is also business so most important thing in the in between the business definition is even if there is no volume frequency continuity or regularity but still it can be business so one time activity can also constitute business so that is actually causing some ambiguity in the gst act but some clarifications are being given next government local pancha local authority then consideration so another important thing is consideration so what do you mean by consideration consideration means i am providing a service or i am giving you a goods i am giving you goods in return you will pay me okay you will pay me you will give me 100 rupees or 500 rupees 
so what is that that is actually consideration whether so i am the seller you are the buyer whether consideration should be given by the buyer itself or can it be given by any third party yes so what do you mean by consideration consideration includes consideration includes any payment made or to be made whether in money or otherwise so it need not be in money itself it can be in the form of non monetary benefit also okay so for example i am providing you some goods in return you are providing me some service so it has some money value so consideration need not be in the form of money itself in response to or for the inducement of the supply of goods or services or both whether by the recipient or by any other person but shall not include any subsidy given by central government or state government so consideration need not be given to the supplier by the buyer itself it can be from any third party also but consideration do not include subsidies given by central government and state government so subsidies given by central government and state governments they are not consideration now the monetary value of any act or forbearance in respect of or in response to or the inducement of supply of goods so need not be in the form of money itself it can be monetary value of any services okay any services or if they not doing so for example i am providing you i am giving you some goods in return what i ask from you is not money what i ask from you is not to do one activity i asked you not to do some activity so for example you are planning to engage in some business i told you please don't engage in that activity and i am giving you in return i am giving some goods so it is non performance of an activity that is also actually a consideration it can be money or it can be non monetary also however deposit given in respect of the supply of goods shall not be considered as payment made unless the supplier apply such a deposit as consideration for the said supply that's actually a very interesting definition and it can be and it is used by our uh, mobile telecom operator jio so for example jio phones has been introduced so in jio phones actually say i think 1500 rupees 1500 rupees as should be given as deposit and it's actually a refundable deposit and we can use the phone for 3 years and after 3 years if we give back the phone in good condition they will give back us the deposit so deposit which is a refundable deposit they have collected say for example uh, a rent rental agreement has been is introduced rental agreement and a refundable deposit say 1 lakh rupees is deposit is collected by the owner of the building and when i am vacating the building the owner will give back the deposit back so in such cases that deposit the deposit is not a consideration because it is refundable so only when this refund when it becomes non refundable only when this deposit becomes non refundable or the supplier up applies it the supplier applies such a deposit as consideration only at that point of time it will be treated as consideration or else for deposit it is not a consideration and gst is not applicable next actionable claim what do you mean by actionable claims actionable claim means claim to any debt other than a debt secured by mortgage of immoral property or by hypothecation or pledge or movable property or to any beneficial interest in movable property not in his possession so the definition it comes to we are not getting any clarity on definition but actually what is actionable claims actionable claim means a claim it's actually a claim so we have the right say for example a fixed deposit fixed deposit has always interest attached to it so if we deposit a fixed if we put some deposit in a bank we are entitled for the interest say for example if you are a shareholder we are entitled for the dividend so that is actually an actionable claim okay so fd receives share certificate so that is actually actionable claims now manufacture we know the meaning of manufacture processing of raw materials then money money means legal tender money itself then taxable supply taxable supply means a supply which is taxable okay so there can be exempted supplies there can be taxable supply also then 
taxable territory. Territory means the area in which it is taxable. Now, services. We have seen the definition of goods, but still now we have not seen the definition of supply. We have seen what is goods. Goods means movable property other than money and securities. Now, what is services? Services is anything other than goods, money and securities. So, goods, other than goods, money and securities, whatever it is service. So, money and securities are neither goods nor services. Now, supplier, supplier recipient, we have discussed this term earlier. Supplier means a person who is supplying goods. Recipient who is receiving the goods. So, supplier means person supplying the said goods or services and include an agent. An agent is also a supplier. Who is a recipient? Recipient means where the consideration is payable, the person who is liable to pay the consideration. So, supplier is providing some services or goods and the other person is liable to pay the consideration, pay the fees. That means he is the recipient. And if, suppose there is no consideration. If there is no consideration and I have given you something, so I gave you. So, you, the goods has been delivered to you. So, that means you are the recipient. Now, person. So, person. What do you mean by person? Person can be individual, HUF, company, partnership firm. LLP, AOP, BOI, any corporation, any body corporate, corporate societies, central government, state government, local authority, societies, trust, artificial judicial person, or every person has everything is included in the definition of person. Now, this is actually the definitions. So, goods we have seen, services we have seen, consideration we have seen. Deposit is not a consideration. Refundable deposit is not a consideration. We have seen business. The definition of business we have seen. One time activity will also constitute business. We have seen. Now we are moving to supply. So actually if we see the Bayer Act. Section 1 is actually title commencement of the Act. Section 2 is definition. Section 3 to Section 6 is actually related to powers of the officers. The officer then powers, the jurisdiction, then authority of the officers under the GST Act. From section 7 onwards, the real challenge begins. Section 7 is supply. Okay, section 7 of CGST Act talks about supply. So section 7, meaning and scope of supply. So actually, supply is the taxable event. If supply happens, supply of goods and services, we have seen the definition of goods and services, for supply of goods and services, GST is applicable. And there can be taxable supply as well as exempted supply. For exempted supply, it is specifically exempted. No GST is applicable. For taxable supply, GST is applicable. Now, section 8 is taxability of composite and mixture supply. So, section 7 and section 8 is in this chapter. So, section 7 is related to supply and section 8 is Composite supply and mixed supply. We have seen bundled activities. So in bundled activities, it can be bundled. How the bundling is done? It can be natural bundling as well as it can be artificial bundling. We will come that sooner. Now there is something known as Schedule 1, Schedule 2, Schedule 3. Very, very important. So this Schedule 1, Schedule 2, Schedule 3 is very important. What is Schedule 1, Schedule 2, Schedule 3? It is in Section 7. So Schedule 1 is activities treated as supply even if it is made cons without consideration schedule 2 activities which are treated as supply of goods nor supply of service schedule 3 neither supply of goods nor supply of service so we will see that we will understand it only when we understand section 7 so let's go to section 7 what does section 7 says meaning and scope of supply that is section 7 so now we are going to read the language of the Act, the Act's language. Supply includes. So, if there is supply, the taxable event is supply. If there is supply, we have to charge. If it is a taxable supply, we have to charge the GST. And supply includes. So, it is not an exhaustive definition. It's an inclusive definition. So, many other things can come. They have given a demonstration of possible items that can come in the meaning of definition under supply. All forms of supply of goods or services or both, such as sale. So one thing is sale. 
then transfer okay say sale of goods transfer of right say i am giving i am transferring the right to use a machinery so it's actually supply i am selling you my shirt it is actually sale it is actually supply then barter exchange what do you mean barter and exchange say for example i am a doctor i am providing you hospital services and in return you are giving me for example you are giving me a car okay so the consideration need not be monetary the consideration can be non monetary also so that is actually barter exchange one thing for another then exchange what do you mean by exchange so for example i purchase the new mobile phone and i have to pay money say for example the new mobile phone cost 20000 and in not consideration what i pay is i pay 15000 as cash and balance 5000 i exchange it for my old mobile phone so say you know amazon or flipkart we exchange our old phone and we purchase our new phone so it's actually exchange so all the item one item plus some money is given in order to purchase new product that is exchange then license license to operate license to use then rental say i am let, letting out my building for rent then leasing or disposal i am selling my item i am selling off made or agreed to be made for a consideration so very important is so supply means it can be sale or it can be transfer or barter or exchange license rental anything but most important thing one it should be for consideration there should be consideration if i am giving something for free if i am giving you something for free then no gst is applicable so i gave you one one dress or i gave you one fan i do not ask for a consideration zero rupees i give it for free no gst is applicable so consideration should be there then it should be by a person we have seen the definition of person everybody is included in the definition of person so a person consideration most important in the course or furtherance of business so it should be in the course or furtherance of business say for example i am giving say i am a normal person i am not into the business i gave you say for example i have purchased uh, one a munch i purchased a munch i bought two munches i gave you one munch 5 rupees munch i gave so 10 rupees munch i gave you so it is not in the course of business so i need not it is not a funds for consideration okay the so i bought a munch i gave you a munch you gave me 10 rupees but it is still not in the course of business because it is other than the course of business in the normal friendship we are giving it so there also gst is not applicable so one thing it should be for consideration second thing it should be in the course or furtherance of business so this is acts language so this is acts language so it should be for consideration it should be in the course or furtherance of business again again coming back importation of service for a consideration whether or not in the course of business very important so earlier in the first point point number a we have seen it should be in the course of business now in the second point we are saying import of service what do you mean by import import means we are bringing something from outside india that is called import and what do you mean by export we are taking something out of india that is actually export so import of service import of service means a somebody so we, we are in india so, so cp and is in india supplier is in outside india and we are asking him to provide some service so import of service import of service for a consideration so one thing consideration should be there so import of service for consideration now if i am importing a service for consideration then even if it is in the course of business or not in the course of business still it is a supply so in the first point we have seen in the course of business but if it is an import of service if it is an import of service then it can be if it is for a consideration even in the course of business or not in the course of business it is a supply now the activity specified in schedule 1 uh, we have seen schedule 1 schedule 2 schedule 3 i told you it will come uh, come few is sooner now activities specified in schedule 1 in schedule 1 say eight say few items are given 
so these items schedule one these items even without consideration even without consideration it is applied in point number a we have seen there should be consideration and it should be in the course of business point number b told say import of service if it is for consideration then in the course of business or not in the course of business it is applied now point number c we see there is a list of items given in schedule one and that schedule one items even if it is without consideration even if it is for free i am giving it free but that activity is mentioned in schedule one then it is supplied gst should be charged on what value gst should be charged we have to calculate the market value and on that value we have to charge the gst now where certain activities or transactions constitute a supply in accordance with the provisions of section one they shall be treated either as supply of goods or supply of service as referred to in schedule two now as per the definition of supply we understood that a particular transaction is supply and supply can be of goods or supply can be of service so how to distinguish whether it is between whether it is supply of goods or supply of service so some activities people are getting a lot of confusions so in order to clear the confusions department has given say list of items where in schedule 2 so in schedule 2 there are a lot of items given and those items we have confusion whether it is supply of goods or supply of service if it is supply if it is supply as per the definition then they have given it this is supply of goods or this is supply of service so no need of confusion so schedule 2 they have given a list of activities if it is supply as per definition then supply of goods or supply of service is specifically given no need of any confusions now notwithstanding anything contained in subsection 1 activities or transactions specified in schedule 3 activities undertaken by central government state government or local authority in which they are engaged as public authorities as notified by the government shall be treated as neither as supply of goods nor supply of service so schedule 3 again there comes schedule 3 so whatever is mentioned above activities mentioned in schedule 3 so those activities can be in the course of business it can be for consideration but still if it is an activity mentioned in schedule 3 no gst it is not a supply it is not a supply so activities mentioned in schedule 3 they are not supply then government has the right central government or state government in which they are engaged as public authority they have the right to publish transactions as neither supply of goods nor supply of service so government in the public interest they can notify few items and they can notify it which is and it is treated as neither supply of goods nor supply of service so even if it is without even if it is for consideration and in the course of business still schedule three items and the notified items they are neither supply of goods nor supply of service now subject to subsections 1 1 and 2 government on the recommendation of the council specify by notification the transactions that are treated as supply of goods and not a supply of service or supply of service and not a supply of goods so government can notify so the department government can notify an item so as from from, the, from this date onwards this particular transaction it is supply of service and not supply of goods or this particular sub transaction it is supply of service and not supply of goods the so government has the right to publish an item by way of notification so in order to clear the ambiguity it is given that so government has the power so schedule one schedule two schedule three we have seen schedule one says about transactions which are supply even if it is there is no consideration so ideally definition says it should be for consideration it should be in the course of business but even if it is without consideration schedule one says few transactions are supply schedule two says if it is supply then no need of confusions supply of goods or supply of service it is specifically given what is schedule three whatever says if it is even though it is for consideration or in the course of business if the activity is listed in schedule three that means it is neither supply of goods nor supply of service import of service import of service if it is for consideration then if it is even in the course of business or not in the course of business it is supply so this is how we interpret the bear act this is how because we have just i have just read the bear act and interpret you now the detailed analysis is given 
in the coming pages. Now, and they have given schedule one. Schedule one, one, two, three, four. Four items are there in schedule one. What is schedule one? Schedule one is transactions which are treated as supply, even if it is without considerations. So total four items are there. Now we will see the analysis and then we will come back to schedule one. So what there are a lot of examples also given in this analysis. So we have seen supply should be of goods or service. Supply of anything other than goods or service like money securities do not attract the GST. We have discussed. So money and securities, they are neither supply of goods nor they are not goods, they are not services. Now, supply should be for consideration, supply should be in the course or furtherance of business. Two conditions we have already seen, supply should be for consideration and it should be in the course or furtherance of business. Now, supply for consideration in the course or furtherance of business. Anything supplied other than goods and services outside the scope of supply, we have seen. What do you mean by goods and service? Goods means any kind of mobile property excludes money and securities. What do you mean by service? Service is anything other than goods, money and securities. Includes actionable claim, growing crops, grass. Includes use of money. There is something known as star mark is given. So I have already given you an example. So for example, you are going to a exchange. So you have some INR and you are exchanging INR and you are purchasing dirhams. And for the conversion of money, they will be charging you a small amount. Okay. So that is actually a service. So just exchange of giving money, it is not a supply but their conversion of money for which they are asking for a separate consideration. That is actually supply of service. Next, supply includes, we have seen definition of supply includes sale, barter, transfer, exchange, rental, license, lease, disposal, etc. for consideration in the course of business. Now, barter. Doctor is providing medical consultancy and barber cuts doctor's hair. So we know this is a barter. Exchange. A new car worth 5 lakh is purchased for exchange of old car along with monetary consideration of 4 lakh. So I am buying a new car in exchange. I am giving old car plus 4 lakh rupees. Now license, lease, rental, disposal, etc. Now consideration. We have seen the definition consideration also. Now there is a notification given by the government. Artwork sent by artist to gallery for exhibition is not a supply as no consideration flow from the gallery to the artist. So for example, a painting exhibition is being conducted. So I am an artist, I drew five pictures and I gave it to the authority for exhibition. So while giving it for exhibition, I am not getting any money. Only if the painting is sold from the exhibition, I am getting money. So transaction by which I am transferring my paintings to the exhibition, it is not a supply because without cons no consideration, it can be in the course of business, but it is without consideration. So it is not a supply. But when it becomes a supply from the exhibition, if somebody liked the picture and purchased it, then they gave the money, then they gave, gave consideration, then gave, they give consideration. At that point, it becomes a supply. So consideration, we have already seen consideration, it can be in the form of money or it can be monetary, non-monetary value also. Deposit is not a consideration we have seen. Only if it, it is only consideration, only when the supplier applies such a deposit as consideration. And consideration excludes subsidy given by central government and state government. Any transaction involving supply of goods or services without the consideration is not a supply unless it is deemed to be supply under Schedule 1. So we have seen Schedule 1, even if it is without consideration, it is supply. So if it is without consideration, then it should be Schedule 1 item. Other than that, no item is a supply. Now, it should be in the course or furtherance of business. So in the course or furtherance of business. So what is business? We have seen the big definition trade, commerce, manufacture, and I have told you one important thing. 
any activity of same nature even if no volume or continuity so one time activity can also constitute business so frequency volume continuity is not a prerequisite we can see some example but there is an important point to be stressed here rishab buy a car for his personal use and after a year sell it to a car dealer sale of car by rishab to car dealer is not a supply because said supply is not in the course or furtherance of business say i am a i purchased a car so after say five years i sold it so it is not in the course of business right it is not in the course of business so but consideration is there i sold my car say i got five lakh rupees so it is not in the course of business but consideration is there so it is it do not satisfy all the conditions required for a supply so it is not a supply manigarnika sold her old gold bangles and earrings to aakushan jewelers sale of old gold jewelry by an individual will not constitute supply as the same cannot be in the course or furtherance of business so i have some gold ornaments i sold it i got the money so it is not in the course of business so it is not a supply but there comes another point we have seen in the definition of business so even if it is there is no volume or frequency one time activity can also constitute business so there is a contradiction between that definition and the example given here the view taken in the above two example is based on the view taken in departmental faq so faq means frequently asked questions so department issues faqs and its answers however as already seen business includes trade commerce or activity whether or not there is frequency in view of this it is also possible to take a view that sale of car and sale of old gold bangle is made in the course of business and will constitute supply so there can be two views in this so one time activity will also constitute so therefore if i sell a car it is a in the course of business for consideration supply happens gst is applicable then second view it is not in the course of business so there is no gst applicable it because it is not a supply so i go with this because if in the faq given so department has specifically said that they are not in the course of business and it is not a supply so we go with that so even there is a definition there is a point mentioned in the business that one time activity will constitute business but we go by this view now we can see lot other examples are given for supply say for example a resident welfare association provides service of depositing electricity bills of the residents in lieu of some nominal charges so welfare association resident association they pay the current with electricity bills and they for paying the electricity bills they ask for a commission so that is actually in the course of business that is supply now services by way of admission to circus cinema hall amusement parks so they are actually supply there is one exception to course or furtherance of business that is import of service so we have seen import of service if it is for consideration then in the course of business or not in the course of business not necessary it is supply 